So what we're saying in words, or in, in math, I should say, is we know that the fraction one half, because it's, I picked this one because it's the one everybody knows. We know that the fraction one half from all of our studies so far is the same thing. I'm gonna put a little double-headed arrow here. It's the same thing as 0 0.5. We know that, but we want to be able to use this and start from this point and calculate that the value is 0 0.5. So you don't have to believe me anymore, you just know. So what does this fraction really represent? All fractions are really a way of writing division. When we have, say one, one with the fraction bar and a two, what we're really saying is that we take one and we divide it into two equal pieces. That's what one half is. We only keep one of the pieces. So we basically have one divided by two. All right, and one divided by two, we can write as a division problem, right? So let's look at it. If you have one divided by two, then you would have one underneath the division house and you will be dividing it by two. And what we're gonna figure out is that when we calculate the answer to this division problem, we're going to get the answer 0 0.5. So all fractions, when you crank through the math, you can find the decimal equivalent of every fraction that you've ever seen. Every fraction, I could pull a fraction out of my head, 17, 30 seconds, there is a decimal equivalent for that. And we're learning now how to calculate the decimal equivalent when we start with the fraction. Start with the fraction, write it as a division problem, one divided by two, one divided by two. All right, so we ask ourselves anytime we do division, can two divide into one? And the answer is no, because one is too small. It, it doesn't divide in, but don't forget uh, that at every whole number that we have, there's always an invisible decimal point here after the whole number. So we're gonna put that decimal here. And since we cannot divide two into one, it's not big enough, then what we're gonna do is actually add a zero after the decimal. Now this 1.0 divided by two is the same thing as one divided by two because when we have 1.0, that's the same as just one whole. There is nothing after the decimal. So all we've done is we've changed the one to 1.0 because we couldn't divide two into one, but making it 1.0 doesn't change the problem at all. Now, anytime we divide decimals, remember this decimal point, it floats up and this is where the decimal will be in our answer. So then we ask ourselves, instead of saying, can two go into one, we ignore the decimal completely, but now we have a one zero, a 10 right here. Can two go into 10? So two times something over here will be 10. Two times what is 10? Two times five is 10. So a five goes right here. And then again, you're ignoring the decimals and they don't even apply to the division process here. They come later as far as understanding the answer. Once we say two times five is 10, we multiply and we write 10 down and we subtract. 10 minus 10 is zero. And there are no other digits here. We could continue adding zeros after the decimal if we want, but we don't need to do it because we got a remainder of zero. This is the remainder at the bottom here. And you want to continue the decimal division process until you get a remainder of zero. So there's only two ways in which this process is gonna end. Either you're gonna get a, a remainder of zero or you're gonna keep going through the process over and over again until you see a repeating pattern in the decimal. Once you start seeing a repeating pattern in the decimal, you can just stop and you know what the pattern is. But here, we got a remainder of zero and we have, there's an invisible zero here because remember two went into one zero times, so there's an invisible zero here. So what we have figured out is the answer to this division problem is 0 0.5. There's an invisible zero here, 0.5. So the way we do it is we look at the fraction that we start with, we take the numerator, we divide by the denominator. We're going to have to put a dot zero to start the process off because two cannot be divided into one. And so we have to add this zero here, but this zero doesn't change the problem uh, as we talked about before. Then two times five is 10, we subtract, get a remainder of zero. Anytime you see a remainder of zero and there's no other digits to drag down in your problem, in your division problem, then you just stop and then the decimal equivalent is 0 0.5, which is exactly the same thing as one half, which is why I picked this one, because you already knew that was the answer, so it should make sense to you. Now, let me ask you about another fraction. Let's take a fraction. This should be also very familiar to you. What about the fraction 1 fourth? Some of you may know what the decimal, the decimal equivalent of this is, and some of you may not, right? I will tell you that the decimal equivalent of 1 fourth is 0.25, 0 0.25. The reason is, you can also think of that, is there's 25 cents in a dollar, which is 100 cents. So there's 25 cents, 0.25, we'll get to that a little bit later, but if you have a hard time remembering, that's how one way you can remember. So let's see if we can calculate this and verify 
that that is the case. What we do is we recognize this as one divided by four. So we say one divided by on the outside four. We ask ourselves, can four go into one? It can't, one's too small. So we put our decimal here, which is always there, it's invisible, and we drop a zero at the end. 1.0 divided by four is the same as one divided by four, so we have not changed anything. The answer in our problem is gonna float above and just stay right there. And then we ask ourselves, four can't go into one, let's try four going into 10. From here on, you ignore the decimal completely. Four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, that's too big. So it has to be four times two multiply and you get an eight subtract. You can borrow if you want, but I think all of you know that 10 minus eight is two. Now notice that we did not get a remainder of zero. In the first problem, we stopped because we got a remainder of zero and there were no more digits here. But when we did this subtraction, we did not get a remainder of zero. You want to keep going until you get a remainder of zero. So here we did not, we know we have to keep going. What do we do? Well, it's 1.0. We can add zeros after the decimal as many as we need because 1.00 is the same as 1.0, which is the same as one. Because any zeros after a decimal point don't change anything. So we can add this here. And now, because we want to continue our process, we just drag it down. And now we have a 20 down here. So what do we say? Now we have a 20. Four times something is 20. Well, we know that four times five is 20. And we subtract and look at this. Now our remainder actually is zero. So we don't add any more zeros and drag it down because we finally got down to a remainder of zero. Notice that we continued this process until we got a remainder of zero. It came very fast. In this process, we got down to a remainder of zero, but we had to add these digits here and continue the process until we got a remainder of zero. And what did we get as a final answer? We got that the final answer is 0 0.25, because even though there's nothing here, we're saying four can go into one zero times, so there's an invisible zero here, and the answer for one fourth is 0 0.25. Now I want you, over time, to remember these decimals. That's why I'm doing these, kind of these fundamental ones. I want you to remember that one half is the same as 0 0.5. I want you to remember that one fourth is the same as 0 0.25, but it might take you a little time to remember those. And for now, I'm trying to show you how to calculate them. All right, let's take a look. This is a really important one. I want you to pay attention. What about the fraction one third? What is the decimal equivalent to one third? Some of you may know, some of you may not. So let's not spoil the answer and let's go and calculate what this decimal is the uh, equivalency is. One divided by three, we're gonna write that as a one and we're gonna divide it by three. We ask ourselves, can three go into one? No, it can't. So we have to continue the problem. We drop our decimal point here and add a zero. And the answer to our problem will have a decimal right above. Three times something is 10. Three times three is nine. Three times four is 12. That's too big. So it has to be three times three. Multiply. Three times three is nine. And we get an answer 10 minus nine of one. Now, we did not get a remainder of zero. So we know we need to continue the problem. How do we continue it? We don't have any more digits, but we can add digits after a decimal as many times as we need. So we drag this and now we have a 10 down here. Three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, that's too big. So it has to be three times three is nine. Multiply, get a nine, subtract, 10 minus nine is one. You might start seeing a pattern forming here. Here we had 10 minus nine and got one, but then we dropped to zero. Then we had again, 10 minus nine and one. Again, we did not have a remainder of zero. Let's continue. We want to continue. We need to drop yet another zero down and drag it down. But that would yet give me a 10 again, which is what I had here, which is also what I had here. Three times something is 10. Well, you got to do the same thing. Three times three is nine is as close as I can get. Subtract and you get yet again a one. Oh no, I didn't get a remainder of zero. I've got to continue. Let me drop yet another zero down here. Look at this. I'm getting the same thing, a 10. Three times something is 10, it has to be three. Three times three is nine, is as close as I can get, and again, I get a remainder of one. So now you can kind of see what's happening. If I continue this process, I will never stop the process because what I'm trying to do is get down where the remainder is zero, but it never, ever, ever happens. The remainder will never, ever be zero. What's going to happen is as I continue dragging zeros down, then I'm going to get another three, and then I will have another 10 down here, and then I'll have another three, and then I'll have another 10, and so on and so on. I can continue, and you can see that these threes and the answer will just continue forever. So what you can say 
is that one third is equal to zero point three 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 three. You can just keep writing them, but you'll be writing them till the end of the time. So you can put a little dot 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 there. A better way to write it is zero point three, and what you do is you put a bar over the three. The bar over the three means the three is repeating forever, and it never ever stops. I mean, literally ever. If you go to a calculator and put one divided by three, then the threes will just go to the end of the screen. But really, the threes never stop. And the reason the threes never stop is because we continue this process, you'll, it'll never ever get to a remainder of zero. You will just get a repeating pattern. So when you divide decimals, you always go until you get a remainder of zero or if you never get a remainder of zero, you notice what pattern is forming in the answer, and then that is going to be the answer. So, so the fraction one third, when you try to represent it as a decimal, it never, ever, ever stops. And so you, instead of writing it with threes and threes forever, you write it at 0 0.3 with a bar on top. Some decimals just never end. And so what we write is in exact form, one third is exact. This is exactly the answer, but if you try to write it as a decimal, then all you can do is, 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 is tell me that the threes never ever end. That's really all you can do. So some decimals will have, or some fractions will have a, a, an equivalent decimal that stops, and we, you can call it a terminal decimal, and some fractions will have a decimal that never ever stops, and so those are special as well. So, only two more problems. Let's take a look at the fraction one-fifth. So we're getting into fractions now where a lot of people may not know what that's equal to, and that's okay. Let's take a look and figure it out. One divided by five. One divided by five. Can five go into one? No. So we drop our decimal, add a zero, and then we know our answer is gonna have a decimal right there. Can five go into 10? Yes, five times two is 10. Multiply 10, subtract 10 minus 10 is zero. So I got a remainder of zero, no more uh, digits to bring down, so I don't need to add anything because I got a remainder of zero. So we know right away that one fifth is equal to the decimal 0 0.2. And that is one that you may not remember. So one fourth is equal to 0.25. One fourth is 0.25, but one fifth is equal to the exact decimal 0 0.2. All right, we have one more in this uh, lesson. Let's take a look at the fraction one-tenth, right? Again, some people may know what this is, some people might not, that's okay. It means one divided by 10. So let's take a one and let's divide it by 10 and see what decimal this is equivalent to. Can 10 go into one? No, it can't. So we have to drop a decimal and a zero and our decimal goes above. 10 times something is 10. Well, 10 times one is 10. Multiply, 10 times one is 10, subtract, get a remainder of zero. And we stop immediately because we get a remainder of zero and there are no further digits to bring down. So what we figured out is the fraction 1 tenth is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And that's the final answer. So in this lesson, I really want you to understand the connection between fractions and decimals. Every fraction that you've ever seen has a decimal equivalent to it, right? And what we're learning how to do here is start with a fraction and calculate what the decimal equivalent is. And what you wanna do is you just wanna take the numerator and divide it by the denominator and use the knowledge of how to divide decimals to do that. And so what you do is you continue the process until the remainder gets to a zero. We got a remainder of zero here, so we stopped. We got a remainder of zero here, so we stop. We got a remainder of zero here, so we stop. But sometimes the remainder will never become zero. And in those cases, you just continue cycling until you can see the pattern in the answer because sometimes fractions will have a decimal equivalent that never ever ends. So this is an infinite decimal that goes on and on forever and the bar on top means that the three repeats forever and ever and ever. If you had a different answer, let's say you had an answer that you got 0 0.6 bar, the bars over the six, that would be 0 0.66666 dot 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 like this. If you had something like 0 0.45, and if the bar were over the four and the five, then it would be like this. The, the bar means four and five repeat, 0 0.45, 4, 5, 4, 5, 5, dot, 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 like this. If you had something like 0 0.123 with the bar over the one, the two, and the three, then you would have 0 0.123, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. See what, what's going on is wherever the bar is, that is what repeats, but if you had something like 0 
two, three, but the bar was only over the three like this, then you would have 0 0.12. The one, two does not repeat. There's no bar over it, but the three does. Three, 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 three. Not like, like this. So wherever the bar is, that is what repeats. One more, let's say I have uh, 0 0.123, but the bar is over the two and the three, but not over the one. What does that look like? 0 0.1, the one does not repeat, but the two, three does. Two, three, two, three, two, three, dot, 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 like this. So wherever you see this bar, that's what repeats. Whatever you see this bar on top, that is what repeats. If it's three digits with a bar, then all three digits repeat. But sometimes the bar is only over some of the digits. The ones without a bar do not repeat, but the ones with a bar does, and that's what I'm trying to show you here. So when you do this division process to find the decimal equivalent, you need to look at the answer and continue cycling until you see what pattern is forming, and that is going to tell you how to write the answer down. I'd like you to practice all of these yourself. When you feel like you have the hang of it, follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with understanding fractions as a decimal. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.